Did y'all know that in the 1930s, Coca-Cola created 67 millionaires in a small town in Florida? Well, if you didn't, don't worry. I did some digging. Let's get into it. Now, I got to start this thing off with this guy right here. This is Mark Monroe, all right? He was a banker in the Quincy, Florida area in the 1920s. Now, in 1929, the Great Depression was kicking in, all right? But it was something that uh, Mr. Monroe, a.k.a. Mr. Pat, realized when it came down to his favorite soft drink. Now, what he realized was that even though the whole country is broke, okay, and people were actually saving up coins just to buy Coca-Cola. Now, with him being a banker, he thought to himself, like, look, this could be a trend that I might need to jump on, all right, which he was right. So he ended up buying a couple shares of Coca-Cola, but it didn't stop with just him, all right? What he did was, he was telling a lot of the people in the town, hey, look, you need to invest in Coca-Cola because I think it's going to do really good. And not only that, when people came into his bank to get a loan, right, he would add money to the loan, all right, basically double the loan, but only under one condition. You had to invest some of the extra money that I gave you into Coca-Cola stocks. Now, which a lot of the people, they accepted the deal, all right? And uh, boy, were they right because Coca-Cola blew up. But like I said, this is the Great Depression time frame, all right? But the people who actually invested in Coca-Cola were able to survive through the Great Depression and help other people out. And not only just helping people out through the Depression, but the town, every time it would go through like a natural disaster, like a freeze or a hurricane, like they never really had to want for any money because at this time, the town had so many people making money, they just gave back to their community. Now look, all right, I don't know if this is true or not, but I saw it in like two separate articles I read about this town, okay? Uh, Mr. Pat himself had 18 kids. And when he was able to retire and do his thing, he was able to leave a million dollars each. A million bucks. He had $18 million just to have our hair kids. Man, Coca-Cola was paying them. And look, there's more. Because look, guess what? They passed down the stocks through generations. Money just growing. Coca-Cola still the number one. So the family's still making money off of these initial investments in the 1920s. Now, here's some of the investors, all right? But if you wish to invest into Coca-Cola, so let's say you was to put in $40 back then. It would have got you a little bit over 1,600 shares, all right? Those 1,600 shares today, that $40, would be worth $10 million. Now, if you go through Quincy today, they say that you'll see, you know, a whole bunch of Coca-Cola memorabilia um, throughout the town. And uh, they represent because the money still float. Now, I guess every year they get together and do some little thing. This looks like it could be annually. Um, if you're from the Quincy area, is there like a, a thing y'all do every year where y'all get together and drink Coca-Cola? I know somebody got me. Now, if you're coming through the Quincy area or you decide to come visit this town, all right, you can uh, visit his house. His house is still here, um, Mr. Monroe. You can visit it. I think it's like a mu uh, museum or something right now. If y'all from Quincy or from the Tallahassee area or anywhere around there, um, let us know in the, in the comments. Give us some details. The more you know. Peace.